This is Fanspeak, a weekly live show where the fans of comics and its community are our guests. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Of course, this is Fan Speak on our uh, Saturday show. Uh, we're very happy to have you guys with us uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day, pretty much. Uh, and uh, uh, we're hoping that uh, we get more and more people in here today because we got some exciting, exciting things to talk about. Uh, do keep in mind, as we always mentioned, uh, take a look at our links down below. And uh, one of the things that's a little bit new down there is, of course, the uh, mailing list for the Immortal Mask. Uh, that's something that Denali's working on, so definitely be part of that uh, and of course uh, go join our fan speak on facebook if you haven't done that already uh, but of course one of the big things that helps us out here you know of course we appreciate those subs and likes as usual but uh, uh, being live streamers uh, really hitting that share button is what helps us out uh, so if you could hit those uh, links there and uh, tell your uh, family and friends and extended community what's going on uh, we'd love to have them over here and join us i see in the chatter we already got the joshua we got the Tank Ferret. Haven't seen you in a while. We got uh, <clears throat> your cousins in here again, Manny. Uh, we got Lorenzo, and uh, we got uh, <laughs> Bill as well. Uh, so uh, thank you guys very much. Let me come over here and uh, uh, talk to our panel and uh, introduce everybody. And uh, we got a couple of uh, nice things. We got a blast from the past with the chairman's address, which will be coming up very shortly. And of course, we're going to be launching a couple of very interesting new things today. Uh, so awesome, awesome. Uh, let's start off by coming over and saying hello to the most llama that is the Denali. How you doing? I was doing just fine until you laid me that rumor out. Ah. <laughs> hurts, hurts. I'm telling you, man. Uh, the, they're doing time travel in Star Wars. They got to go back in time. Kylo and Ray are end up going to be Shmi's mother. I'm telling you, they're going to be oh, Shmi's parents. I'm telling you. I know this is even horrible than the other rumors. Ah. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It is perfect. Uh, we got Thunder in here. Hello, sir. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, but uh, nice to have you here, of course, uh, uh, Denali. Uh, we're also joined by George. Hey, George. Hi, today I'm going to be substituting for Booster and any artist that doesn't appear, including Pixel Trader. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh -huh. I, I ask your questions, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I will do my best to imitate their, uh, their responses. Okay, well, if you're going to do boost, you're going to remember, stand, understand you have to be drunk at all times and you have to be ultra hetero, which means the opposite of hetero. You understand that, right? I, I, am, I am trying to figure that out. I'm looking <laughs> in the dictionary. He's he's looking in the dictionary, folks. <laughs> All right, uh, moving down. Of course, uh, we I also have uh, we have good dog presses with us today. How you doing, Manny? How you doing, Chester? It's been a long time. I've been kind of busy though. You have been, dude. Uh, how's your campaign doing, dude? My campaign is doing fantastic. It's 450%. I mean, over. I mean, it's great. We awesome. funded in 29 minutes, and it keeps on going. I mean, we got 28 more days, so go check it out. That is awesome, dude. And we'll get some uh, time later on where we'll actually uh, uh, be able to uh, put that information up. Of course, our moderators will take care of it as well. Uh, and, of course, Pixel says kick George. Well, Pixel, why aren't you in here? You're supposed to be in here. You do realize that, right? He's such a shy boy. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for being here, Manny. We also got Todd, Ooh, the creator of Florida Man, and many other things. How you doing, Todd? Oh, I'm doing really good. Um, I'm glad to be here, and especially to, to be in here with Manny. That's that's awesome. Because um, Skunk Girl, you know what? That, that's a, a cool product. And uh, mm -hmm. you know what? We, we, we at IndieCom TV, we support all, all the different indie books. And uh, we'd love to have him come on and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be like, hopefully we'll be ready while we're, you know, while his campaign's still going. But definitely want to have Manny come on and, and we want to show off Skunk Girl. Yeah, no, absolutely, dude. I think it sounds like a great idea. Uh, and, of course, we are also joined by Dr. Wright, who's going to be the man of the hour for a little bit here. Uh, how you doing, Dr. Wright? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. How, you, how, how, how about you? 
I am great, dude. It is a beautiful sunny day, and I'm luckily hiding inside the air conditioning because it's probably about, I don't know, 280 degrees outside. Uh, but, uh, you know, air conditioning is a blessing from God. Oh, so you're like in Australia, audibly crackling in the sun, all that kind of good stuff, huh? Oh, yeah, it's really bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, really bad. It's so humid here. I mean, they get up to like on a normal sunny day, it's like 90, 90% humidity, dude. It's ridiculous. And uh, we got heat that's like over 100 degrees. It's just Maria. It's like living in a sauna. Anyway, that's my that's my burden, not yours. Uh, he says he's on the phone doing chores. Sir, you are supposed to be here. Responsibilities. <laughs> Uh, but of course, guys, uh, we're going to come over to our last person on the panel. And of course, uh, it is a blast from the past. We have not seen him in a while. And I'm very, very excited because everybody, we got the wolf and we have the chairman's address. Hello, Chester and the Fanspeak panel and our guests and creators. Thank you. It is, of course, always an honor to be here. And, you know, welcome back, Fanspeak. Oh, well, okay. So I was the one that was gone. Mm -hmm. So maybe that should be the other way around. Yeah. But when I say welcome back, Fanspeak, it means I'm welcoming you back to me and into my life. And because it's, it's, it's exciting. You know, a long time ago, nearly a year ago now, we were discussing how our lives had changed. How through the advent of ComicsGate and the entire indie uh, movement of comic books, how our schedules changed, our, our, our viewing habits changed through YouTube. You know, maybe we'd be watching other channels even, something on Netflix, but now we were on YouTube. We're watching people draw comics and it, it even changed us. We decided we would wanted to get involved from the, from the fan perspective. And, and, and that really led us to really alter our lives. You know, Chester and Denali and I, we talked about this at some point and, and it was so impactful. And so here I was with, uh, with the group for so long, and then other things start to happen. And we've all felt it. A little bit of drama, a little bit of problems with personalities between one member, two members, and sometimes entire groups. And I must say that even I myself got to the point where it was just a little bit tiring. So I did have a, a little vacation, uh, about two months, I believe. But I advise anyone if you want to take a vacation, it's fine. Take a, take a week, take two, take a month, month or, or even two, but you'll come back. And the exciting thing is that you can come back. And everyone here has, has been excited for me to come back for, to, the, to do the chairman's address. And it's just been a warm welcome. Everyone wants everyone here. And that's the important part. As we continue going through this process, of indie comics, what it means through the Indiegogos and through the campaigns. There's always more and more support. I'm feeling that now joining you guys again, it's exciting. I want to, once again, I have my excitement level back up. I want to be involved in all the projects and, and see what's going on. And, and, and I just want to say thank you for what you're doing. Everyone out there, take a break, come back if you need to get revitalized. And as always, of course, it's just what I'm saying. What are the fans saying? Welcome to Fanspeak. Excellent, dude. And, uh, of course, we're very happy to have you back. And everybody can take a vacation except for Chester. Chester never gets a vacation. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I'm very happy to have you back, dude. Uh, it's been, it has certainly been a while. Uh, and uh, we got a lot more people in the chat. Uh, the numbers are picking up. Uh, we're very happy about that, guys. we got some cool things to talk about today, too. So if you hadn't sh haven't shared this out yet, please do. Uh, you know, hitting that like button and subscribing, too, is awesome. Uh, we love that. But uh, uh, share it out and let people know what's going on and uh, see if we can get some big numbers. Because there's some big news today. Uh, and we're going to be covering a couple other things, too, that uh, Todd is involved in. Of course, Manny here and his skunk girl. But uh, first thing we really need to do is jump in. And talk to Dr. Wright. Now, Dr. Wright, are you ready to go here, sir? Yeah, I'm always ready. What's going on? He says he's always ready. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we're going to be talking about the launch of something you and Pixel and uh, several other people are working on. So uh, why don't you go ahead and lay it out? Sure. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't know, probably about three weeks ago, Pixel and I had a conversation on the phone. And we went, yeah, let's do a thing. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And then uh, pretty much from that point, the both of us have worked uh, anywhere between 20 and 24 hours a day, gotten about three to four hours of sleep at most. And we have uh, put together a great team behind the scenes. 
uh, it looks like they're all kind of shy right now, so they're not they're they're not showing up. Mm -hmm. But it is a great team behind the scenes, and more or less, we've created something called Insider Magazine. So obviously, that's kind of a double entendre, you know, insight something. In this case, we never want to incite, you know, outrage or insult. I mean, there's, you, you, if you want that, it's out there. You can get it. What we want to incite for you is creativity, will, drive. We want you to break the glass ceiling, rip rocket into the sky and find your own path. You know, you want to come in, you want to show your own goods, you, you want to pull people off our site. Cool. If you want to find something, you know, you want to uh, talk about gaming in an insightful way, then please do. If you want to come on, we've got Kat and uh, Kat Rocha and uh, Jay Ashiro. Uh, Jay wrote an awesome article on a comic book called The Uniques last night. It's already gotten hundreds of people uh, to engage with it. And it's already gotten, you know, I think it's already sold like three or four copies. I've gotten three or four comments throughout uh, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, the site itself saying, oh my gosh, I got to go check this out. You know? Yeah, we uh, <laughs> see Pixel in the chat saying that the history is deeper than that. Uh, the first time we thought about this project was probably November, like October, November last year. But we decided to actually put it together about three or four weeks ago. Yeah, sure. No, I remember him talking about it a year ago. Yeah. So th this is the, the site that he's showing right now. And as you can see, um, the biggest thing that we focus on are what we got, what's our blended brand of creative projects called Insight. That's the category up there on the on the right. And what we've got going on right now is we're talking about uh, Troll Smasher from Leonore. She's one of our creators behind the scenes. We have Science Wizard Comics with Josh and Mr. Marvel, who uh, Twitter, you know, so, so unrighteously banned. And, you know, we have a few other projects as well. And so here's Jay Ashiro talking about the uniques and other projects that are going on. He dropped us about five articles <laughs> last night and said, sprinkle these throughout the month. I'll be back later. Sweet. Yeah. That's so awesome. uh, he is, his articles are fantastic. You know, if you have prose, if you have art, if you have comic previews, if you have some sort of blended creative project that you want to get out there, then let us know about it. We will make you a contributor. You come on and you promote yourself. Even if the promotion of yourself takes you or our, our fans that come into another site, that's fine. That's not what it's about. I'm not trying to make money on the site. We're not trying to, you know, build our numbers and that kind of thing. It's going to be great. We do, you know, we, we, we have a great logo. We do have a friend uh, behind the scenes again who is an, a fantastic modeler, and he's creating a different logo. It's an animated one based on uh, another one <laughs> that Zevius, who is a uh, logo master, I mean, he's just amazing at creating logos and mastheads. He actually created the logo for our site, and Model 316 is creating an animated 3D version of it. Sweet. So... Yeah, we're, we're going to be, we're in like Flynn. We have Edwin's endorsement. Uh, he is behind this project 100%. I don't know if she's going to get on or she's going to get in chat, but I know Bean from PA has been, I've been keeping her informed and, and she supports this 100% as well. I have a, a friend. I mean, this, this has already done what it's supposed to do. It's reached out beyond a lot of this proposed closed community. I would never show most of what you know has happened in the past i'd say year and a half in this in this community and everything to people outside of it because it was just so ridiculous mm. i had a friend i have a friend today who is a femlet professor okay she's as liberal as you can get but we're friends i showed her the site and her response was that is freaking cool how you know how and you know basically how often is it updated so i can look again and she's showing it to her friends That's and she's great. showing it to her boyfriend and isn't awesome. that what we really want? Sure. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Growth Definitely. has always been the biggest yeah. thing, you know, and yeah. you well, part of that growth has just been, you know, myself and, um, and Chester, right. We were not looking at comic books for, uh, uh say two years back. Right. Yeah. It was only, only since then, you know, we were big comic fans, uh, 10, maybe 20 years ago. And now we're back because of independence, not because Marvel is doing it in great or DC, but because of independence. And so this is this is awesome. And of course, what we, what that means is we're touching other people. I've got another guy that I know that he's not part of the general, you know, uh, community that we have going on here. But he talks to me and then he checks out Indies and he goes and supports. So that's exactly the type of stuff that we've been talking about and want. So that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, it goes beyond that. This project actually does go beyond that. There is uh, something that's more ambitious because Pixel and I can never do anything simple. 
you know, if you ask us to create a block, we're going to make a mountain. That's just how we think. Okay. You put us together. I'm, I'm kind of the, the, the hard charger and persuader and pixels, the brains you put us together, we get shit done. Uh, this is going to be a, what this is going to do. We're going to scrape some of this information and we have, we actually do have, uh, other, like the more exclusive material, things like a letter, uh, an article on lettering from Eric Weathers, a special pinup and endorsement from Billy Tucci, a colored cover by a, or a, a colored and illustrated cover by illustrated by, uh, Elliot Fernandez colored by Kelsey Shannon, a back jacket by Canaan white, and even more articles by other people in the community and outside that reached out to us and said, I want to be part of this. Yep. No, absolutely. And we are creating, it's a print. It's going to be a print on demand from Amazon magazine, uh, uh, available quarterly. There you go. And they are doing the print on demand, which I think is a pretty cool thing. It's not just a digital uh, online thing. So if you want a actual physical copy and with all the cool art that we know is going to be uh, flooding in, it's really cool, actually. Uh, let me come over, take here a moment and see what the chat's talking about. Uh, we have uh, Lorenzo says, says, it's cool to see the wolf again. I agree. Welcome back to Wolf Tank says. Uh, and uh, Model 3 says... Uh, uh, this guy's wearing a suit. Oh, he thinks he's better than us. I don't think so. Uh, and uh, Pixel says, DeWolf is subtly calling me out for not being on the panel right now. Uh, no, actually, I'm calling you out for not being on the panel, Pixel. Uh, me, directly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, do me a favor and please put the link to uh, Insider Magazine on the uh, in the chat, please, Pixel, since you're in there. Uh, let me see here. Ar <laughs> Bill from uh, Argos Creation says, don't think, he's, don't think he's wearing pants. Are you wearing pants, uh, DeWolf? I can neither confirm nor deny anything. Great. This is the world I live in. Uh, Evan Van Skyver, hey, what's going on? I think he's better than us. Uh, he looks like an adult. <laughs> That's true. Uh, DeWolf, uh, DeWolf, the most well-met, sir, uh, Tank says. He's happy to have you back. Um, thank you. Thank you. And let me see here. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, they they call me Doctor Love. Uh, Comebook Bob says I'm not really sure. Well, they call me the lightsaber of love. Is it the same thing? I'm not really sure. Uh, Pixel Trader says the history is deeper than that. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's been he's been talking about that for quite a while. It's really cool to see you guys get that done. By the way, um, uh, he said he put the pedal to the metal, uh, put the pedal to the metal a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, you guys did start pushing all, all of a sudden real quick, and that's cool. Uh, let's see, click the rocket. Uh, he, uh, Billy Tucci is super excited about it. We'll be sharing some, uh, behind the scenes stuff from, uh, Billy very soon, which is cool. We all love Billy Tucci. Uh, really, really excitable guy. Uh, comic book Bob says, can someone drop the link to this site? Yeah, right. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Pixel. Uh, great job. Uh, maybe I could change this one a bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, excellent, guys. Uh, so uh, thank you for all the interaction. We've got a bunch of people in here. We do appreciate that. Uh, now, uh, of course, we're going to get to our normal fan speak stuff, and we will cover some news a little bit later. But uh, uh, we do want to kind of cover the things that are going on. Uh, now, of course, we just talked a little bit about it, Insider Magazine uh, and the really cool things going on, uh, things that are going on with that. Now, uh, we have the links. So you guys can go check it out. Uh, how much content you got right now, Dr. Wright? Uh, there's about... 17 articles i mean if we really wanted to we could drop about 20 27 uh, a lot of people have dropped multiple articles we just got cat rocha today she's going to start putting her night editor uh and you know some other things in there my my you know my line is basically that uh you cannot insult you cannot outrage it's got to be informative and have some sort of critical analysis to it they have like some things that probably border on the line, you know, because I mean, like adventures and awful, like it does call out uh, like some of these writers and everything. I'm okay with it though, because it, it's not only it, it's funny for one thing, but the other is that, you know, they do point out, this is what could make it better. You know, they, they give a critical analysis and, and it's, you know, constructive criticism and I'm okay with that, you know? And it's just, my biggest thing here is like, look, if you want to, you know, you want to hate something, there's plenty of places for that, you know, go somewhere else. Right. But here we're going to incite creativity. Mm -hmm. We're going to incite your will and we're going to incite the community to reach out beyond itself. 
No, oh, that's awesome, dude. And of course, uh, that sounds kind of familiar because that's what we do over here in Fan Fanspeak. We don't want any of that silly drama. We just want to enjoy comics and stuff and having a laugh at some uh, silly things, sure. But uh, it's all about having fun with the hobby, right? Uh, and uh, the thing is that you got to keep in mind, guys, uh, they are putting an all ca all cars bulletin out, guys. Uh, all cars welcome, meaning uh, everybody can come in and submit. Uh, I know myself, I put up a little baby step art uh, article in there. It's very simple and uh, 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 review of uh, uh, Kickstarter that's going on, but uh, I myself plan on uh, uh, doing uh, uh, several things, uh, some more uh, uh, board game or tabletop gaming reviews. I also have some uh, uh, short story stuff I'm working on, so that's just from me. Uh, and there's a lot, a lot of people that are far more creative than I am. Uh, I'm looking at of... uh, Bean. I'm sorry, I'm looking at Bean in the chat right now. I just want to say to Bean, you know, thank you very much for being part of this community. You've put up with a lot, and we all know that. And, and you're a big reason why things like this have been created. So thank you. Awesome. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to ask is, we have a, got PS Melter in here. I haven't seen you in a while, dude. Uh, but uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about here was uh, we got a lot of creative types sitting right in the panel themselves. Uh, so mm. I'd like to ask, uh, you know, what kind of things you guys think you could throw onto an internet magazine about comic book ner nerddom? Well, actually, just about nerddom in general. Uh, what about you, DeWolf? I'm working on mine. You are. Well, you know sweet. that. Yeah, sweet. I'm well, stuck. Yeah, I got stuck. Um, as a matter of fact, it was it was uh, part of that, and that's that's of course the uh, the role playing game. Um, uh -huh. It it is um, part of my part of my break was to be able to get back to it um, with energy because oh, with nice. everything going on, family, fan speak, everything else. Um, it was it was so difficult, and I had had told you guys. I know Denali, for instance, he was he was uh, looking into you know wait waiting to see what was going to come out with that, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be sure I could get back to it because I didn't want to have it uh, have other people with expectations that I couldn't fulfill. Even though I didn't have any great promises, but I, I want to make my great promises and want to get it out there because mm -hmm. I think it'll help out this this whole community. I think could be helped out through that. I think so too. So uh, uh, and, yeah, uh, thanks, Rand. Yeah, no, no. And uh, when you get to a point, you should come and uh, we should sit down together and uh, I'll, we'll put a little interview together with you because you can't interview yourself, right? Uh, but uh, I think that would be great, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, Denali has stuff coming up he could talk about. How about you, George? You got any kind of uh, uh, any kind of um, reviews or any kind of thing you might uh, that might be good for Insider Magazine? Um, I already uh, contribute to Bleeding Cool, Bleeding Fool, and a bunch of other places. Um, I provide uh, the the paragraphs and the concepts, and they run with it with somebody else's byline and stuff like that. Um, my my stuff is hard hitting. I mean, there's just so much humor in in all my work. It, it people will just die of laughing. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. know if I want to do that uh, to the site. Okay. Now you said you were going to do well, Booster, right? Not not Adam Wright Booster, right? Well, it's a little well, bit it's different. Like, uh, a lot of screaming, a lot of uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, homosexual tendency type of jokes. You know, booster, booster. I, I'm I'm still I'm still trying I'm still yeah, okay. trying to find the inner booster. <laughs> Yes. Well, all jokes aside, actually, uh, uh, in all seriousness, George, uh, you could put like a, a logistics or a statistical type of uh, article together that would be, I think, quite helpful. Uh, you're really good at that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, that might be helpful. Yeah, uh, like uh, uh, Since we uh, do have a lot of creators, uh, hey, Pixel, you mind throwing uh, at Xevious up in here? Because Xevious is really good at, at like cover design, art direction, mm -hmm. logos, mastheads, all that kind of good stuff. I mean, he's, he's top of the game. There you go. More people being added. Uh, but I think, George, you should definitely do a thing. Uh, maybe you should start out with a, an article like um, uh, on uh, shipping costs for uh, uh, crowdfunding. Uh, you're really uh, well, uh, very knowledgeable on that. Uh, but, uh, and of course, we got uh, Manny up in here, and uh, Manny's a very busy, busy man. Uh, uh, do you have any <laughs> ideas on uh, what might be cool for Insider Magazine, sir? Well, what could be cool is something like my story. I mean, coming from nowhere a year ago, building up a channel, then getting a successful crowdfunding campaign. You know, it, it just yeah. doesn't come over here, man. You know, yeah. I'm more than happy for you to, to be a contributor. Yeah. Give me your email. Send it to me, bladenight81 at gmail.com or insightmag at gmail.com or insidermag at gmail.com. Email, okay. you know, your email to me will, uh, you know, make you a contributor. You make your promotion. I'm not responsible for your promotion, but I will give you the pulpit that you need to give it. 
yeah, I mean, it would be a good good article to tell people the mistakes I made, mistakes I learned on the way, and you know, help some people out with their crowd crowdfunding. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, now, Todd, you're super busy with a ton of stuff. I mean, you're doing comics uh, for like uh, Mike Barron, and uh, you're working on the uh, Indycom TV. I mean, uh, but uh, you get any ideas for this? Todd. Wait, Todd's running to the microphone. Yeah, right I've actually talked to Pixel about an idea I have, and 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 if they need some artwork, all they need to do is ask. But the idea is sort of a strip comic instead of comics. Is just something I would do uh, weekly or monthly or something like that. And uh, you know, um, he's just got to pass it through everyone and see if they're okay with it because it does it does do parody. Um, but we'll see, you know, I'm willing to be involved in other, in other capacities. They know that. And I, and I think uh, I have good communication with Pixel. So I think I'll be on board. Don't worry about it. Awesome. And uh, I over see, here, uh, that... Edwin in the chat as well, too. I do. Edwin Boyette. He is, uh, even though he's, he's not, uh, you know, directly involved other than, you know, the uh, contributing of articles in Insider, he has been insightful in the community in the past few weeks. And he is, you know, he's been the engine that drives a lot of us. And he has taken the bullet for a lot of things that are going out there so that Pixel and I could just kind of, you know, get behind him and not get, you know, and, and ride the draft. You know what I mean? Sure. He's taken the wind and, and we're behind him sailing. Yeah. And we appreciate that, Edwin. Thank you very much. Well, you yeah, know, better think, Edwin than Booster. You don't uh, want behind his most, draft. They don't want to be behind that draft at all, no. Uh, but uh, then, of course, you know, Edwin, we, we, we all love Edwin very much. He says, uh, Lyle is standing up for the fans and uh, saying, uh, be decent and don't grind people down. Uh, ruined it. I'll do my best. Uh, I'll do that eight days a week. Yeah, no, right, dude? Uh, and, of course, Edwin does a lot to help people behind the scenes uh, that people don't even know. Uh, what he's doing so uh, uh we appreciate edwin a lot of course uh and uh you know guys i think the point here with insider magazine uh, is it's uh it's very professional looking uh, as you can check on yourself and you saw me showing earlier uh it's uh, got some people who really know what they're doing and there's a lot of content coming in so uh the idea is if you have an idea you want to put a story story up an article or something like that submit it put it through the process right uh and uh let these uh, let the uh dr wright and the editors over there take a look at it and maybe they'll give you ideas uh, like for instance, uh, like I said, I just put up a little teeny uh, review today, and uh, very very quickly he took it and made it look so much better than what I had put it. In. And I thought it looked good from the beginning, but boom! And it took you what ten minutes? Uh, so it's um, I, it took me a little bit more time than that. I mean, we're learning honestly. Like I tell you what, like Cat Rocha and Jay Ishiro, they classy up the joint. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Ishiro came in, dropped five articles that look like. Uh, the Sistine Chapel, you know, compared to our uh, old dinky church in Tennessee. Sure. I mean, <laughs> they're just, they both are, are more familiar with working with WordPress, I think, because it's uh, Zero One Publishing, you know, their site, they already have it. But even without that, I mean, Jay Shiro is just an amazing writer. He's an amazing prose writer. He's an amazing visual narrative writer. He is an amazing, uh, you know, article writer. He's just a really good writer. He's an absolute testament to this community. And it's horrible that he, you know, was not able to find an artist for such a long time. And was treated with disdain. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and it is good to have uh, those kind of people, those kind of skills. And I guess uh, we're going to have to start learn uh, WordPress, guys, uh, because uh, I had to email my thing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I am a boomer. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, we are we're definitely going to continue talking about this throughout the uh, uh, show today. Uh, and because uh, Insider Magazine, this is their launch today, and uh, we're very happy to have them come over here and do that with us. Uh, definitely check it out, and we'll come back and look at it again. Before I jump into some news, however, I would love to uh, to cover a couple of the other things that are going on. Uh, of course, uh, we talked to Manny a little bit uh, about his uh, Skunk Girl, and definitely check that out. Uh, one of the mods here will throw that link up in there. Uh, but what I want to also do to today was to take a, a few minutes and talk about another project that's in the works, which is quite different than Insider Magazine. Uh, but I think it's also uh, it's as interesting. Uh, now we have Todd in here with us today. Uh, now Todd, uh, I don't know exactly what you're showing. It's some kind of weird screen. But uh, uh, you, of course, and a few other people are involved in Indiecom TV. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it, dude? All right. So we we want to create uh, original content and be the hub for Indiecom. Wait, 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 hold on. I'm 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 sorry. I'm looking at I'm looking at your screen. Is he white boxed? Is Todd white boxed? No, he's not. Because 
he needs to be white boxed. And while he's white boxed, what we need right here is is the old um, THX. Okay, thank you for the special <laughs> effects, DeWolf. That was very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, oh, darn it's copyrighted. <laughs> what I want to say about Anycom TV is just want to be a hub for entertainment. Uh, you know, where we, we, we plan to class up the joint in, as far as this is a neutral channel. We hope to have creators from, uh, uh, you know, we have some guys that are Kickstarter only because that's where their audience is. You know, so this is a, a unaffiliated network that we're trying to create just to promote each other and promote other books. So other books will have, even if you're not involved with the channel, you'll have an opportunity to come on. We'll have interview shows and things like that for sure. And, um, but we're all, if you check out the content we have so far, I think you'll get an idea of what we're trying to do as far as be beyond that, because there are plenty of talk and draw shows. There's plenty of other shows where they, 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 um, you know, they do tutorials and, and speed ups and stuff like that. Well, we want to give you something where you're being entertained, somewhat like fan speak here does the covers the news. Um, and so I hope everyone will give us a chance and get over there and subscribe because Indycom TV is it, we're trying to create hours and hours of, of programming that you'll be able to check in on whenever at your leisure and find something for you because we have some ideas where there'll be things there for children. There'll be things there for adults. It's um, but it's all it's comics and comics related geekdom to really define it. So there it's broad. You know, we hope mm -hmm. to get some animator, animators involved. We hope to get some people that, like, once they see that we're, there's no affiliation, that they're willing to come in and be a part of this. Because that, because I've had some behind-the-scenes stuff go on where, where people are watching and looking and commenting and getting feedback already. So well, I think it'll be really big. I think it will be, too. I think, and you already have some animators involved in this. Uh, we've already seen some cool stuff. Uh, just to let you know, uh, I had you white box, but all you're showing is this weird DOS screen, dude. I don't know what uh, what, what you're doing on your oh, side. What is going on? Hold I don't on. Know, you're not showing anything but this weird blue screen. Everyone's laughing why... at you in the chat. It's been mentioned like a thousand okay, times. Let me... I'm sorry. It's like it's uh you know it's like group. playing on my it's he's playing speaking on my to, uh, his people and we just don't know the language. That's probably what it is. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing the screen. Okay, he wants to show you this little bit of animation. I get it. Okay. Uh, this yeah, is this little... is created by yeah. this is created by Joseph White. All, all this was all done by him. Um check this out. Now it was playing on my end and I don't know why it wasn't playing through, but um that was a little weird. But look what he did inside of three days. Pretty awesome. And he's putting he's together the music for it, you know, right now. Yeah, no, it looks cool. And uh, it's an idea of, uh, get, and of course, one of the things that's uh, good about having Todd involved with this is Todd has a lot of connections into the arts uh, artist world uh, beyond uh, just the people in our community. He knows a lot of people, you know, pros working at the big companies uh, that are beyond this. And uh, he's actually been able to help over here because, as you guys know, Fanspeak is very neutral. Uh, we don't take sides one way or the other. We just uh, here to love comic books. Uh, so he's actually helped us get some uh, pretty fun guests in here that uh, – some of the other people in the community probably wouldn't be able to get because of the, you know, the politics that have been going on. Uh, one of those, of course, uh, being uh, one of the big ones is uh, Black Sunday Murders guy. Uh, and that's, like I had said with, with Todd earlier, that's probably one of the best books we've seen in the past decade, dude. And uh, so uh, I think it's very interesting to see the amount of talent that we don't usually see over here uh, that I think that Indie TV might be able to allow us to see, uh, especially because they're they're not affiliating, affiliating themselves with anything whatsoever, which seems to be the theme of the day, isn't it? Uh, let's all be mm. nice to each other and have fun and love comic books and not create this side or that side, right? That's kind of the theme. Everything here today is about that. And uh, that's, that's a very cool thing. Uh, now, <clears throat> I do have something in here from... Uh, uh, Joe said in the chat, I think is pretty interesting. He says, Insider sounds just uh, uh, what the indie comics re uh, re revival needs. Uh, would you be willing to cover comic book inspired music? I mean, music that's composed as if it were a comic book in sound form. That's interesting. That's for you, uh, Dr. Wright. 
Why? Well, I mean, I'd already, I've been answering him in the chat, but I'll answer it anyway. He was talking about music that was in the form of a comic book. I mean, I don't know that maybe that's like, you know, what is the, uh, is it synest synesthesia, you know, where you, yeah, where you right. can kind of see it. And that's cool. I mean, you know, if, if that's like something he wants to do, that's great. What I proposed is that, uh, you know, I told Pixel, give him our email, let him reach out to us. He's passionate about this project, obviously like spread it out. You know, you be the impetus, you be the rocket. You know what I mean? I'll give you the platform. I'll give you the fuel. You be the rocket. So you come here, you be passionate, you write this article, you do this thing, you show us this music, put it in line into this article so that people can pay attention to it, they can listen to it. And then, you know, let's let the people decide. Because in the end, right, that's what it's about. It's about the people, the fans. Let's get it out to them, figure out what happens later. No, absolutely, dude. Uh, and of course, um, uh, Argos says, I've seen Chester and I've seen Japan, but I haven't seen them together. Dun, dun, dun. oh wow that is a really good point it's a very good point very good point yeah hey yeah i just i've noticed something because dr wright keeps saying this thing where he says hey come join us and you come promote yourself and bring something with you also that maybe you can share with other people teach other people right so what you're doing is you're you're putting something out there that, that and, and, and it kind of sounds like that you're putting yourself out except I just want to remind everyone this, when you give a little bit of yourself, right, you get back far more. So you go out there, you, you show some, show something else for someone else, like how you can draw better, uh, how, how you can market better, get your books out there and your campaign better. And because you do that, you get more exposure and then it comes back to you and, and then you get even uh, more, uh, you know, uh, customers and in, in, in sales, et cetera, et cetera. So, and of course, just part of a bigger, bigger, the, com the community. So yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to remind people of, of how the, the world works, the universe yeah. works yeah. in this particular way. And I also think to add to that, uh, don't misunderstand what Dr. Wright is saying. Uh, of course, you're going to get help over there. Uh, they have editors, they have people that are going to help you out and uh, try to uh, make you look the best that you can and, and as make the magazine look the best it can, of course. Uh, but uh, he's saying that uh, he wants your voice to be your voice. And that's a place that you can do that. And we know there's a lot of online magazines and newspapers and such that uh, you can't have a voice whatsoever. Uh, and besides that, it's really cool because we have our own magazine now man and that is very very cool thing uh and i hope it grows and i hope it becomes something absolutely awesome uh but not to put words in your mouth dr right but i'm kind of assuming that's what you meant to say well i mean that's what i've been saying yeah you know yeah. basically the you know you come in and we want you to promote yourself you're responsible for your promotion as far as like editing syntax that kind of thing trying to pretty it up i'll do that for you and we have other people that will do that for you but like, I mean, you know, we covered the uh, the the Texas Bells at Belcon. I think you know that went on today, uh, with Iconic Comics with Tim Lim, and you know there was Nerd Wonder, Captain Cummings, Doug, and a few other people there. Some of the the uh, the OG of the community. You know, we have a, our intrepid on-site reporter, and she has got interviews with all of them. She's coming back uh, probably tomorrow, or I would guess tomorrow. She's already sent me some pictures, and uh, you know, some of that is very important. Uh, included within our magazine is going to be a forward from none other than Douglas Ernst, you know, again, classy and up the joint. So, I mean, we've got some big names and some big presentation, but what we wanted to show people is that we, this is already here. This is a bridge and we're going to build this bridge for you. You know, we're building that to the, to the community. So the community can come to us and then we're going to take that community up. You know, let's all build up together. The whole point of, you know, like, music that sounds like a comic book or prose or any other insight project is that it's all different, right? Everything's different. Everything reaches out to somebody else. You know, my friend, she loved like some of the prose. She loved some of the articles that she wouldn't have even read. She said, I don't even know anything about perspective, but the way he wrote was interesting. Right. You know, she didn't know anything about the uniques, but the way that Shira wrote was interesting. So she checked it out. She sat, you know, while her boyfriend was doing something and she read it. And that's what we want. You know, now she's going to bring more people into the community and other people will, too. Just because someone comes in, say, for the music doesn't mean they won't look at the comics or they won't oh, look yeah. at the gaming article That's right. or anything else. You know, so you put yourself in and you get out what everybody puts in Absolutely. because you're part of a group. Mm -hmm. It's a mutually symbiotic relationship, not a parasitic one. I'm not trying to drag you down. I'm not trying to be competitive with you. I'm not trying to tell you that you can't shield yourself. Show yourself as much as you want. 
Yeah, awesome. And uh, John Diller does have a response. He says, challenge accepted. I'll post a video. Now make sure you put that accent in Mexican because, you know, it's a Mexican thing. Uh, but uh, John, no feet and definitely no mayonnaise. I told you before, dude. Uh, anyway, uh, it looks like we have a new pe- person who jumped into the uh, chat with yeah, us here. I have no idea about no feet and no mayonnaise. Is that some sort of reference to Liefeld? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it, you take it any way you want, but that was for John Dillard. He knows what I'm talking about. I have to watch that guy. Oh, okay. uh, but how are you doing, uh, Mr. Ishiro? How you, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm 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 thrilled with seeing how the uh, website looks. You guys really outdid yourselves, and I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, that uh, was now... a pain <laughs> because uh, the, it oh. was supposed to be. Um, we had uh, a person that was an expert, and he's, you know, DJ Quad, and I just want to, you know, uh, my. I hope that his dad's okay and that everything's going good with him. And he had to kind of leave us on our own for a little bit. I mean, Pixel's a developer, so it's not like we were, we didn't have anything. But mostly it was me, and I don't know anything about WordPress, and I had to learn. <laughs> so uh, that was fun. It, I, I, I said it was like Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like putting in modules, and then you go play it, and you're like, oh, that didn't work, so you have to redo it again, you know, put it in right yeah. away. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, what did I miss? Uh, everything. It's oh, all right. Okay. Uh, no, we were talking about your article uh, a little bit and uh, several of the other things. Uh, would you like to give us like a, a, a quick little summary of the article you wrote uh, so people can go over and check it out? Oh, sure. Well, I covered a series that I always felt never really got enough attention. And when we started seeing this big boom in uh, indie superhero titles coming out of, well, a certain other movement that imploded, uh, I was disappointed that uh, the Uniques, which is by uh, Adam Withers and Comfort Love, got zero attention. I mean, this was like so many people were, uh, you know, lamenting the loss of what they once loved about Marvel and DC. And if there was ever a a series that really captured all those things, it's what uh, Adam and Comfort had achieved with their Uniques. And so I just figured, hey, this is the right place to promote it. We'll put it here. Awesome. And Uniques is the way I've described it, as it really feels a lot like 90s, a 90s era Marvel universe with mutants and just that power level and that kind of blending of reality with uh, the Marvel superhero universe with some heavy overtones of Teen Titans. But what makes it unique is that, well, yeah, <laughs> Uniques, um, is since this is an all new continuity, everything makes sense. There's no bizarre retcons going on. And despite the fact that there are so many elements that we have seen before, the writing and the characterization and the ideas are so solid that it doesn't matter that it's an old narrative. Um, it feels fresh, it feels new because the people it's happening to are. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome, dude. I, and, when I read his article, like, I could only think that, like, I mean, you, the new thing, The Boys, you know, has come out. And it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's, it's more like postmodern deconstruction of schlock, you know, yeah. where everything's destructive and evil and, and, you know, every person's bad. And they all have to follow the kind of tropey bad behavior, you know, of being a superhero. Nobody's heroic and that kind of thing. And I'm like, the difference is, like, the unique is that, but they're heroic. They're written with hope. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. I would just recommend uh, if if you enjoyed superhero, the superhero genre as a genre, and if you really enjoyed the Marvel U back before it all fell apart, um, this this book has what you're looking for. Although it is written for definitely a PG-13 audience, maybe a little older at times. No, oh, that's okay. Uh, the Boys is certainly one of my favorite comic book series uh, uh, that, uh, in my in my life of reading. And, uh, of course, uh, keep in mind, guys, we're not going to do any spoilers on The Boys' uh, uh, Amazon Prime show until Monday. Uh, and that's the 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time show. And uh, we're going to spoil the hell out of it. Uh, so if you guys want to come <laughs> back and have that, you come and watch it because I got something to say. 
uh, and a few other people do as well. But uh, so we're not going to no spoilers on that right here. But uh, uh, definitely check out uh, um, uh, Jay's uh, uh, article uh, with Insider. And uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming on and talking about it a little bit. Uh, now uh, I do see here Argos Creations. Uh, Bill uh, has some interesting. He says uh, I like how both of these platforms are a vehicle to promote, uh, but that it is intri intrinsic that the participants have to work it. Uh, participants work hard and uh, uh, perseverance, bedrock for a strong industry. Now I agree 100%, dude. And then all the other comments in the chat, of course, are typical from my chat, and they're talking about uh, having a debate of whether. Uh, DeWolf tucks his shirt into his underwear or he uses special <clears throat> uh, apparatus. You guys are... Uh, really, guys? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, just to add to what uh, Ishiro is saying, um, what is going on is reconstruction. I think we talked about this months ago, back when we early started and one of our guests was talking about it. I can't remember that so i do apologize maybe it was Ish ishiro uh or somebody else we were talking about reconstruction of comic books and that's what one yeah. of the main reasons why we came into the indie scenes and do the part like the wolf said earlier that we want to reconstruct we want to connect we want to build a bridge um to get the back to the old school back to where the master works back to when things were yeah. heroic well uh, i know that for a time there i was talking quite a bit about reconstructing the uh mm -hmm. classic hero su uh, superhero uh for a new era with uh, my bombshell uh, title but unfortunately uh i i'm out of the game i i cannot find a reliable artist to save my life so Unfortunately, I'm just a prose writer now. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. You have come to the exact right place. Uh, you do realize we have a stable of 100 professional artists here, right? Said reliable. You know how artists are. I, well, I know it's like hurting cats, and I do it every week, Thursday at 10, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but, dude, we have an absolutely killer list of artists. Uh, if you're looking for an artist... Joseph, uh, you... Liss, uh, Joseph White isn't on the list, is he? Uh, Joseph White is not on the <laughs> oh, list. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, but, uh, well, no, seriously. Well, don't do ever not. put him on the list. Okay. All right. Well, we'll oh. tell Joseph that. Uh, but no, we... he's in the chat, so he heard it loud and clear. Goodness gracious. Uh, but no, but... no, I, I, I'll, I'll be quite open. He killed the project. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. Why are you doing that here, Jay? <laughs> you, 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 seriously, you don't come in here and do that. This okay. isn't your house. I'm sorry. I'm. I, I hope you are. I'm. I'm really serious. Yeah, I am. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Because uh, your anyway. professionalism is is questioned uh, now. Still. All right, it's none of that. Me. Knock it off. Yeah. Uh, but uh, seriously, okay, uh, no, we do no. Have Actually, a... you know what? You go. No, no, you're right. Let's take a step back for a second. You're right. You know what? Okay. My own bitterness over that, and I will admit, I am deeply, deeply bitter. Um, over that. Okay, and you're right. This is your house. We're trying to turn over a new leaf, and that was thoroughly, thoroughly inappropriate. Um, I, I, I would say that probably I've become a little too loose on uh, my uh, grievances over that project uh, with friends at times. Uh, I know that we can all become very attached to a project, and uh, to have it uh, torn away after uh, so much time and effort and money has gone into it, it hurts. But no, that wasn't appropriate. You're right. Well, thank I you. Mean, let's just... Let's just go forward, guys. Yeah, We're yeah. Going forward, right? um, now, uh, uh, to go back to what I was saying was we do have a lot of great artists that, uh, of course, a lot. Uh, we're looking for work, man. And if you're looking for good artists, uh, uh, you just uh, come and have a chat with us and we'll uh, try to put you in contact with them, you know. Uh, but beyond that, guys, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, switch over and do our news as we do every fan speak. And then at the end, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about Insider Magazine. And we will talk about IndieCom TV as well. Uh, and we'll take a little bit of time to talk, about, uh, talk with Manny about his, uh, his success with Skunk Girl as well. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and jump over. And... Get up in here, Leonor. <laughs> oh, there's a Leonor in there. Hello. Uh, but let me go ahead over and uh, uh, share with you guys. And uh, I will jump over and start the news. And we got a doozy to start today, too. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, because it just shows you the insanity of the world we live in. Uh, but uh, all right, let me come over here. Uh, where is it? Is this one? I got to start the right one. 
It's not that one. Okay. No, no, this one. This this one. This is the one. <laughs> this is the one. Oh, Denali. Give us the love, man. All right. From Bounty into Comics by John F. Trent. Uh, Charlie's Angels actress Kristen Stewart claims she can communicate with ghosts. I knew it. Oh, yeah. I knew it. My comment was, that's why she's got such a deadpan expression all the time. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I love Hollywood news because they're all so vapid and stupid. I mean, most all of them. Uh, It's wonderful content for us that's just constantly delivering and delivering. And I know George doesn't like it because George says, don't ever mention them and uh, they'll go away. (laughs) Doesn't work that way, George, I'm telling you. Uh, But uh, this is just wonderful. Uh, Kristen Stewart has spent the past few months just saying the absolutely innocuous, vacuous things over and over and over again. And then, of course, it's all SJW, SJW, women this, women that. And it's uh, as if we have any trouble with women anyway. We love women. Right. You the one it seems not to miss uh, Kristen Stewart. Uh, but now we know that she's a ghost whisperer. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. It's just beautiful. Wait a second. Uh, Hold on. I I'm 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 calling foul on this one. OK, you, you at, at least our at least the current reaction on it, because we're talking comic books. Uh-huh. Right, we got Doctor Strange, we got we got Ghost Rider, uh-huh. we've got everything in the world. We do a show on Sundays called TFT. Did you just mix my name with two different characters? <laughs> what? <laughs> Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange. Yes, yes, oh, yes. nice. Yes, that was oh, okay. that was intentional, even. Yeah, no, but really, this the this, this happens all the time, right? There are people that are kind of you know in touch with and in tune with a, a greater world that is just the the one that we experience and we can touch and feel mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and this of all the claims that i've heard of recently this one is small potatoes <laughs> yeah i guess but it's just funny coming out of her dude come on this this girl is the least acting ability of uh i mean brie larson is better than her man i mean literally <laughs> oh burn well, dude, she's okay. a horrible actress, man. She has no range whatsoever. I don't even know why she gets in front of the camera. She must know the right people. Uh, but uh, it's just it's just icing on the cake, dude. Uh, and I haven't even read the article, and I'm sure I'm, it, 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 it's completely something different. I'm sure it is, but I don't care. I like the headline. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments <laughs> okay. on Kristen Stewart claiming to communicate with the ghosts? I, I got a greater appreciator for Robert... <laughs> um, for Rob or Rob. I think Leonor said she would love on Brie Larson. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, well, she can come in and love on anyone she wants. That's fine. Uh, but <clears throat> I know it's not a big article, guys. It's not important. I just thought it was funny. Uh, and I, I just had to say it. Look at her face right there. Look at the expression. She's like, you are going to listen to me <laughs> right now. You're going to listen. You're listening. No, she's like, you're over there being a man. Do you know that your man you. annoys me? <laughs> right, right. Right. As long as her dog doesn't tell her to kill anybody. Oh, I, I goodness that's... gracious. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Son of Sam reference in the right. house. All right. That's what on we Netflix. In, on um... Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the other hand, you know, I'd actually watch that movie. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have, yeah. To, I have to point this out. This particular article <laughs> has uh, given us Chester's laughter. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. White's dad joke. I mean, I think this is a great accomplishment. I think so too. I think so. Yes. Uh, <laughs> In the halls of Chris, <laughs> Model three. <laughs> model three says Kristen has grown as an actress. Her mouth is closed. I love models. <laughs> <laughs> She usually is. She's a mouth breather for damn sure, dude. Uh, but anyway, I know it's not a big article. Let's move on to something uh, uh, more substantive, substantive here. Uh, ooh, okay. That's a that's an announcement. <laughs> yeah, from that uh, line, uh, Sylvester Stallone and Dolph Lundgren are going to start an action drama series starring the two of them. Um, what is it? <laughs> it's called puppeteers. <laughs> puppeteers. We're gonna... They're gonna be like strings attached to them. I mean, if you stand yeah. by them, one of these guys, dust might fall out. But yeah, but see, I do think there's a hint in the headline here. Dolph Lundgren, uh, Sylvester Stallone, action drama series heats up TV marketplace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
because they're pitching it to the TV networks and streams. It's going to be an hour long, starting uh, London with as a squad. Uh, agent. Oh, so they're going to pretend to be like wax music, like a wax museum. Okay, I got it. Yes, wax it off, wax <laughs> it on. It's going to be like twenty four. <laughs> so that's pretty much what it is. So they're like they're looking for some network to pay up the pilot for their first shows. Yeah. So uh, that's the whole thing. Well, you know, the, the I, that's something I will say about this, uh, uh, you know, offhand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sylvester Stallone has done a lot of interesting and weird stuff over the years, for sure. Uh, they're definitely getting older. Uh, but uh, Sylvester Stallone is actually a very solid actor when he wants to be. And uh, even though Dolph gets a lot of flack, uh, Dolph Lundgren might not be the greatest actor in the world. Uh, but one thing is, if you go back to the 80s action heroes, uh, and I were to ask you guys a question, which one of those action heroes, Jean-Claude Van Damme, even, you know, Jackie Chan, even if you want to throw him in there, uh, but which of those actual action heroes had the best and, and actually most capable fighting technique of anybody? Brandon Lee. <laughs> Chief, man. Get out of here. What is that? Uh, <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's no, you're not right. It's Dolph Lundgren. This dude is incredibly skilled combat combatant, actually. And a lot of people don't understand that. He's don't give six, him the credit. What is he, like 6'5? Dude, he's and freaking amazing. Like the dude 200. does. That alone makes him a skilled combatant. No, dude. Move. He also has a PhD to back up those punches. Yeah, I know. He's yeah, he a, does. He's got a um, in like chemical engineering. But I mean, Sylvester Stallone is his own, and in his own right is an amazing writer. He actually wrote yeah, he uh, First Blood. He wrote that yeah. script, the entire thing. Yeah. Uh, I think he wrote all the Rocky movies. I mean, he wrote almost every movie he's ever been in. Sure. Yeah. You know, since no, he came out of He did write those. <laughs> Stallone's amazing. Uh, but if you guys ever seen, like, uh, I Come in Peace, for instance, uh, which is a little bit of a B movie, but it's a Dolph Lung- one of my favorite Dolph Lundgren movies. And if you look at the things he's doing in there, uh, because he gets, to, he gets to be up front and center and there's a lot of action in it. Uh, this six foot something guy that you're talking about actually jumps up in the air, does uh, spinning round kicks at lightning speeds, and just literally centimeters away from people's faces. Uh, he is an impressive human being, actually. Now, he's getting a little bit old i don't think he can be doing those kind of things anymore but uh i've always felt that uh, dolph didn't get the respect he deserved actually because people see jean-claude van damme is like oh, he's doing a split and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh yeah you the could problem run is right he has a bad accent you can't take a person who has great skill physique and all in that kind of stuff try to put him into an action movie when they don't have a, just a good speaking voice Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, we've never seen that before. No. Like, I'll be back. You ever, you ever see it? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Terminator. You know. Yeah. Schwarzenegger. I love right, it. Was a, one of the later Expendables, like they made fun of the fact that he was a chemical engineer, and he tried right. to like detonate a wall based on what the 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 uh, chemical composition of the rock was. Mm. Right. No, he yeah. is smart. Guy I love too. Yeah, I, I'm with awesome. you, Chester. I love Dolph. I, I think yeah. that throwing him in here it, with with Sylvester really has potential. It does to be it something interesting. Does. It could be yeah. something really cool. Too. And so Sylvester <laughs> hated uh, him. Okay, I just gotta say to Joe Marone, be nice <laughs> until it's time to not be nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So Dick. I was saying. I uh, I was gonna say no that Sylvester hated the uh, Landrum in Rocky IV because. One of his punches almost killed Sylvester Stallone. And one, oh, yeah. he said, "Give me one solid hit." Boom! That first hit, he was in the hospital for three days in a coma. Yeah. Well, whatever. You almost got killed. It's like I hated that guy for the rest of the filming. Yeah. Uh, Pixel makes a really good point about uh, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme. He was a ballerina. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was. He was. Uh, they call them balladeers. He's just so you know, he is he male. Martial arts for like twelve years. He competed. He was one of the best in Europe. But yeah. then he stopped because somebody saw him and some producer saw him and said he looked pretty. And so he left wherever it was in Belgium or whatever and went to Hollywood. Started, you know, making was he was like a dish boy. For, and then he did one of those like super fancy kicks over somebody's head. And they were like, yeah, you're hired. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. I like uh, John Claude stuff too, uh, but there was a lot of good stuff. And uh, <laughs> you were telling Joe to stop saying Roadhouse, dude. Patrick Swayze was a great uh, action hero. You know who else was a great action hero to show a little bit of uh, respect because uh, we lost him this week. Uh, if you guys have not seen Rucker Hauer in Blind Fury, 
uh, then you need to go check it out. Oh, because he that is one of Rutger the coolest Howard, our, yes. our reporter yeah. girl is um, the one that I told you about is on site doing mm-hmm. iconic comics and everything with Doug and Tim yeah. is going to do a, an article and a report on Rutger Hauer and I think it's Lady Hawk. That's one of oh. her favorite. Oh, wow. so wow. he's going to do an yeah. entire article on that. She, she asked me if she could. And I'm like, why not? <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool, dude. Uh, but um, uh, his Blind Fury is an absolutely killer movie. It doesn't get anywhere near the respect that it deserves. And that guy is a legitimate action star. Uh, go watch it and tell me he's not. Right. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was cool. Nice conversation came off of that. And uh, I have it on rumor. I got a rumor though. I got to share this really quickly at the end here. I got a rumor about both of these gentlemen. It's it's a it's a very loose rumor. Um, I I I can't diverge any delve diverge any sources or anything about them. But I I believe it's been said that they are both uh, Scoundrel fans. Uh, how do you do, Wolf? We do not we do not report on rumors here at Fanspeak. We are a, a prestigious. News thingamajig. Uh, uh, there were people that said they like you, so. <laughs> Booster, how can, Booster, how can you come in here with your oily birdie hmm? self and say anything about being hmm? prestigious? <laughs> how do I say that word again? I got it right the first time. Prestigious. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Booster, we needed you I, more. I decided to come in because I hear people weren't behaving. <laughs> we needed you more in the crowd than here. Go back. <laughs> What? Well, no, what? because George is failing you, Dr. miserably. Wright. You think I won't? You think I won't come in here and fight you? <laughs> well, I think you would, but I, I mean, you, I can hold you off with one arm. It's all right. You know, oh. let's not go. <laughs> oh, one pun to hold him off. That was a good comeback. I liked it. I liked it. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, moving on here. Uh, let's go on to the next article. Uh, I don't know. What, uh, we oh, uh, maybe we should. Place. We'll come back to that one. Uh, there's another article that oh, ties yeah. into it better. Uh, but uh, uh, we we don't want to yeah. spend much time on this, Denali. But uh, let's cover it quick. Sure. So Slash Film is reporting that for Disney World in Florida, the Star Wars Galaxy Edge will be serving alcohol throughout the park, not just in the cantina. Wow. So if you wow. want to get drunk at Disneyland or Disney World, I mean, here's your chance because they're letting free alcohol throughout the park. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, this is the most important somebody. little part of the article right here, though, uh, Denali. Uh, <laughs> the uh, to- Tokanda quencher a bacardi dragon berry rum uh blue curacao simple orange with pineapple kiwi Ooh, kiwi 15 bucks 13.25 15 dollars 13 you understand that they're putting in here specifically show look look we can sell alcohol for less than 100 dollars. see 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 that's what that is <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> exactly well we've been uh just for those of you guys who uh in here might not know but uh We've been covering the debacle that is Disneyland and Disney World for quite a while now, and we've been following the Star Wars Galaxy Edge aspect of it. And they're <clears throat> they're finding a lot of troubles. And when they opened up Galaxy Edge, they had a lot of way overpriced stuff and no one there to buy it. Uh, so this is just so what a you're saying, is, What you're saying is the headline, though, it says that they will serve alcohol due to the price. They want to serve alcohol, but they won't. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I always like the the Renaissance festivals like alcohol. <laughs> you know, you go there for five bucks. You know, you get the the wench special, which is you know the huge glass that barely fits in between uh, certain cleavage, and it's about Ooh. three foot tall, <laughs> and takes you all day to drink. By the time you're done with it, you can't remember where you are. You may have lost an ear. It's true. I've seen it happen. I'm not going to lie. I just like the idea of getting on the piss with Mickey Mouse and Goofy. That sounds great. I don't think it sounds great at all. I think this is a horribly <laughs> stupid idea. Look, it's dude. Disney well, World. Look, what are you doing? Look, 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 <laughs> I don't want to uh, hear that. Okay? I don't describe. imagine them in the costume. They totally break character. They're like, you know who I bloody hate. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I was uh, in high school. I don't even at, like uh, Mickey Mouse. Age 16. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I made the horrible mistake of the one and only time I ever tried LSD. I, I went to Disneyland and uh-huh. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a high like world a great combo. What the hell? It's a high world after all. It was the one and only time I ever tried <laughs> LSD, and I think it was uh, probably one of the most enlightening and dumbest things I'd ever done. Nice. Yeah, well, <laughs> I remember one it time when I was on LSD world. and I broke three hands. None of them were mine. <laughs> Oh my god, Tista, most stories about you being a bloody brute. How many ears did you take that day? That was no ears, but uh, uh, I, everyone decided that because uh, everyone was tripping their balls, everyone decided that they, we wanted, they wanted a sword fight, but they forgot for like half a second that I actually know how. 
Uh, and of course, is I this was. A, uh, is this an ongoing <laughs> thing with you of breaking hands? He does. He breaks, <laughs> he breaks hands, <laughs> ears, eyeballs. Not just a freaking brute. Or himself and forgets about it. It's so weird. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, someone stabbed me in the gut. That's an intestine. I did I have several. This one time I killed a man. <laughs> I did oh, have several God. cuts, but I didn't break anything. Uh, but I did break, uh, break mm. a few hands that night. Uh, but no one knew it until the next Every day. Every time the excuse Wonderful is, head. I didn't do it on purpose. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. It was an accident. And, and, and no one even knew it until the day after. The wonders of LSD. <laughs> that guy kills you. He's like, I was just trying to defend myself. No, no, no. The only thing that oh, I you came gave out Eric of it Hawkins with, a new drawing idea, mate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was, uh, I was peeking on the Alice in Wonderland ride, and I'm sitting there, and I'm all, the, all these flashing lights are all around me, and huh. I'm, I'm sitting in this little cart, and it suddenly occurs to me that I had paid an ungodly sum of money to come into a dark room and sit in a little car that looked like a caterpillar <laughs> and watch pla uh, flat cardboard cutout cards dance around me to music and i decided this was a terrible terrible choice did any of them try to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't really have any any hallucinations per se that was kind of the disappointing part i just mm. my sense of time was completely lost and um <laughs> i became extremely self-aware of uh do you know what that reminds me of what you remember have you ever read uh like neil gaiman's work oh yeah absolutely american gods the carousel uh no, I have not read that. No, no, no. American Gods. The, the book is American Gods. In American yeah, I haven't Gods. read that one. Okay, well, in it, there's like the place where they go beyond the veil to sort of <laughs> in the God realm is this carousel. It's like a, a weird, trippy uh, amusement park with just this, you know, it's kind of underground and you walk through this like weird labyrinth of, you know, uh, li like lights that have been strung, you know, along yeah. caverns, cavernous walls and everything to a big subterranean carousel and it lights up and it talked about it just in that kind of way like i would imagine you would see an underground carousel high <laughs> well and fyi that carousel is actually a real place because that's one of his uh i know that was one of the, yeah yeah I mean, he always does it. he bases pretty much everything he writes on something real yeah. because that I, way, it's a little more like was that? where american gods no no where's the real one no. that it was based on oh uh it's a let me see it was in the heart of america let me look it up exactly where it was because i got the book and i read it and he talks about it but give me a second i will be right back well you know as he checks that the last time i took uh, acid actually i remember very clearly uh because i woke up in the morning there was two chicks next to me who had been <laughs> prodigiously and equally beaten with the ugly bat and i was like nope. oh my okay. goodness uh, that's okay, not what's, happening what's going on here? nope they're supposed to be about comic books nope. and uh and the uh, indie com and indie TV. the house on the rock is a location. We're, we're doing control here. Yeah, the house on the rock. There hey man, no we're control. talking about we're LSD. Control, Respect it. The one in San Francisco. It's in Wisconsin. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Disney World and alcohol brought on the LSD conversation. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. beautiful world. Come on, look at Fantasia. Uh, look at Fantasia. Yeah, thank you for arriving to our uh, Christian stream, boys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, come on. Those are young, youthful, uh, yeah. rascally days. Yeah, maybe come on. Will come out sometime, you know? Uh -huh. it, they, well, they, hey, they, hey, okay. If you want the if you want the public service announcement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I took LSD, and the the big revelation, other than me wasting money at Disneyland, was that. Uh, I had actually realized I had taken my intellect for granted and that I felt like an utter moron and that, that I never wanted to do that again. <laughs> well, see, it had value. And there, that you was know. it. I went straight edge oh, after that. that. Yeah. Never did wow. anything again. Yeah. That's cool. Well, uh, it seems that uh, uh, Model 3 accidentally did acid a few dozen times. That explains a lot, Model. That, <laughs> that explains does. a lot of his art. It, it, I'm just it does. It does, yeah. No, I, <laughs> Model 316, if anybody out there, if any of you creators need a miniature created, uh -huh. uh, get with Model. Model is the best. You're, in the you're, you're underselling Model. Model is really good at many things. He is. I know, uh, but I'm uh, saying if you want this because that's what he wants to do. That's what he wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, one of the things that he reached out for. I mean, he's capable of anything he wants to do, I think. He is. Well, he's a professional. I think this is really the regard, way to put it. Yeah. You know, get in What's touch with rate? him. He is fantastic. Uh, I, I give all the accolades to him and Zevius again. Both of these guys are on the team and, you know, are invaluable. Yeah. 
You know who else is invaluable? Yes. Ultraman is invaluable. Ultraman is invaluable. Yes. Okay, but that well, was like one of the puppies from the Power Rangers with a, a, a silver mask. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is a love for the Ultraman? Yeah. Apparently not. not. <laughs> this is the OG, I believe, yeah. Ultraman. Shin Ultraman and work through Hidea Akira Anato, and I butchered it, and Shinji Higut. Uh, he Gucci. Oh my God. Shinji Higuchi. 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 Wow. Wow. Right. I'm going to tell my wife. Yes, She's true. right next to me. Junko. Do it. Booster Do it. is mocking it. the Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> She's crying. Yes, sir, now. I got a question. See what you did. As a yeah. As an ignorant fan person, uh -huh. in Shin Ultraman, what does the Shin mean? Death. Oh, wow. Oh, that's oh no. Yeah, doesn't also mean you as well. Uh huh. No. And what does so Ultraman it means mean? In death. Japanese? All right, but it also yeah. it, it can be represented as a number four, but uh, that's not. That what we're explains doing. Achilles' <clears throat> shin. Ha! Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was bad, dude. That was really that bad. That was really bad. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what the hell, man? Uh, all right. <laughs> Denali, get through the damn story. Come on. All right, right. So they're developing a new Ultraman film. So because uh, the creators made Shin Godzilla and one of the other directors, Anno, um, did Evan Gallen that everybody's talking about because of the Netflix poor dubbing. I thought it was kind of funny to bring it up that these creators are now making the new Ultraman works that will be highly depressive, highly controversial, and highly messed up. Thank it will you, be. sir. Really? It's making an adult version. Yeah, of that's it, yeah. kind of the um, that's so Was that's Tom kind of the same it? problem with the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I no, I think uh, Edith that... Tsuburaya had created Ultraman to be everything that a uh, that a, essentially what was it a 12 year old wanted to see. In, in, a, in a daily TV show, which was superheroes and giant monsters and mm -hmm. Uh, just just brightly colored sci-fi stuff so yeah it's kind of the same problem isn't it yeah i guess mm. yeah right yeah. Are, are they going to try to uh, sell this into the american um, markets and stuff because well, if they are they're going to have to call it shin ultra mam oh uh, <laughs> ouch <laughs> no we only have one you, that... oh, you can't see it but my eyes are rolling so hard that, my head hurts that looks oh, funny though <laughs> Come on, dad joke is back with a DeWolf for sure. And uh, Booster, that's not just a dad joke. That's a just a little bit joke. of a back of a bit dad joke about. Just a little dad bit of dad joke too. Dad joke too. Well, just a little bit of update, Booster. I got to update for you. My wife said she's very disappointed because she used to respect you. She never respected me. Yes, she did. Don't lie to my face. Yeah, are you right. such a boomer that you're still on fax machines and beepers? What is... Come on now. Come on. <laughs> At least two people in the audience got that reference. <laughs> I thought just was using pigeon carriers. What the hell? <laughs> you know, how, how old am I going to end up being by the end of it, DeWolf? I keep getting uh, older by the century these days. Uh, you're so yeah, old, yeah, you're the guy true. who killed Jesus. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Still got the spear? No, he just broke his hand. <laughs> yeah, right. I would, <laughs> I would love right. to have that spear, Lajanus. I didn't know I had a Roman name. I do have a Roman name. I am Cornelius. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. The truth <clears throat> is not revealed. It is revealed. So we oh. can look forward to shit, Ultraman. That's a good deal. Yeah, there you go. I don't uh, want to say what that sounded like. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> Denali. <Didn't help. laughs> This is actually right. this is actually a big story, guys. Yes, actually, it is this uh, E3 Expo leaks the personal information of over two thousand journalists that are attending. So basically, a spreadsheet with all the information somehow got online, and two thousand <laughs> journalists that were are our attendee E3 has their personal information out in the webs. Yeah, and that's so. including like Yong Yi, and uh, that's all also like um, uh, our boy. Uh, um, uh, over at the Young quartering, Yi. Jeremy, yeah, Young Yi, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a whole bunch of these guys got uh, got outed by this, and uh, <clears throat> the question is, why is was it by deal? accident or intentionally? Intentionally. Why is what's the, the level deal? of the breach? Are we talking about um, financial information or just basically home addresses and phone yeah. numbers? Yeah, basically that. I don't think there's any kind of financial okay. stuff uh, that I know of. Uh, I haven't heard that yet, uh, but uh, it's basically uh, yeah. personal information. They were docs, I mean, majorly docs. Like they're just like, yes, they're here, you know. 
and it's who they are. Like maybe yeah. you know their real names or whatever. Oh no, which I don't a, think would be. How do you dox? How do you dox two thousand journalists and you haven't already filed bankruptcy? Right. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly like that huge of a mistake it sounds intentional in some way. It feels it, doesn't it? Right, yeah. Especially with all the drama yeah. going on right now. Yeah. So, I mean, just it, it feels crazy. like a more of a little warning of who's going to be there, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, look at this. Mm. Look at these these people that that don't like these everything. Nits. Well, you know the thing that's interesting, uh, particularly with Yong Yi, uh, is um, uh, he is actually, uh, if you ever watch his stuff, he's a pretty nice guy. Uh, he does actual journalism, and uh, there's mm -hmm. nothing that is political about him at all, actually. Oh, uh, but he has been under major fire for quite a while, uh, for no good reason at all. I mean, he's been thrown into the well, heat he's with the... Uh, fire for the same reason a bunch of people. I mean, I know, like, you know, Jeremy from the quartering is a bit, like, incendiary. He can and, be, yeah. and somewhat insulting, you know, to a, a, quite a lot of people. I mean, his, he knows what his bit is. It's drama and conflict. He knows yeah. that. Young Yi does not try to do drama and conflict. He just yeah. tries to give the information. But he does have his own opinions. He's, you know, he's not, a, like, a, a, a wilting flower, you know? He's not going to, like, shy away from what he actually believes. So, you know, good on him. And there's, there's too little of that. There's too little of that actual yeah. journalistic integrity in hmm. existing in the world today. We have too many hmm. people that are willing to shill their hearts out for a few more coins, a few more virtue dollars, a few more hearts, a few more likes. You know what I mean? And yeah. to get the, you know, and then the ones that aren't, you know, they, they tie the, to the other side, to the conflict. There's too few people that just give the information, give, you know, what is going on. They do say their opinion, but they don't try to sway yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've heard that he actually uh like skunk girl and thinks that everyone should back skunk girl yeah well there you go thank you oh, very much mm, mm, mm. uh internal yeah. shilling Sad, she takes good. a breath away yeah. uh, like but, that, is, that stinks well actually to give you a, a quick kind of reference on uh, on that aspect that uh, dr Wright just talked about uh with yong Yi himself um, he came out uh, many, many months ago, and uh, there were a lot of um, ex-employees from CD Projekt Red that were making a big stink about the um, uh, the overworking hours and uh, not enough money and respect and yada, yada, yada. And uh, he covered it very clearly. And uh, what CD Projekt Red did was gotten hold of him and uh, uh, said, well, we'll do an interview with you and we'll, uh, we'll talk about and answer any question you have. And he did. And he's put out a lot of stuff. And now he's one of their main people that is releasing through it because they allowed him to do his job exactly the way it was supposed to be. And he didn't budge off of it. Uh, so when you are when you do have journalistic integrity, it actually will pay off for you in the long run uh, if you're dealing with companies that aren't completely soulless. You know what I mean? Right. <clears throat> Which is hard because there's all these companies are becoming soulless at some point. Yeah, well. unfortunately hopefully new companies will come up and you know replace them because that's how capitalism work <laughs> yeah it's an interesting story though we'll god see how it's capitalism well, well god bless capitalism. Does anyone do you think it's it's ironic that expo actually stands for exposition <laughs> in this article <laughs> no no that i don't think that at all todd that Exposed. Never mind. Yeah. Moving on. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. 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 No. Never do that again. Oh, that it's yeah. called Expo, and they were exposed. Stay away from my family, Todd. Oh, God. <laughs> and you guys complain again? about my LSD joke uh, and and or stories. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on. What is this? From Inverse, they did an interview with the uh, Black Widow writer, who says she isn't scared about making uh, the fanboys. Mad and that uh, she's not going to hear to comics yeah, that okay, are discriminatory. Let, yeah, let me fix that for. Her. Mm -hmm. I'm not upset about making a movie you won't care about. <laughs> Pretty much. There you go. End of story. We can move on. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Fine. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I thought this site looked kind of cool. And if you guys go over and check out Insider, it kind of looks cool like this, too. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, all right. I guess moving on. Aww. How idiotic. <laughs> I don't want to write something fans are going to like. What? This is well, the stupid world we live in. Ryan Johnson okay. did the exact same thing. World. Dude. I mean, did you hear about that, like what is it, the Witcher thing where they're like, we uh, yeah. are this this fantasy world is based on a fictional version of Poland where everybody's white, but you know what? There should be diversity because America. 
What? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Makes sense to Imagine me, Imagine being so not racist that you just become racist again and on other people's cultures, particularly in this case, Poland. Yeah, well, oh, so you know, uh, uh, like they go to Poland. Let me ask you guys. Like, you don't have enough black people here. Ugh, oh, my God. Yeah, well, that you is know the what? You know what? I'm going to invade Poland. Okay, you go for that. <laughs> yeah. Just like that you dude alone? invaded the border wall. I saw what happened with him. Um, all right, let me move on. This, seem, uh, this seems to have yeah. touched something in somebody. Anyway, this one is hilarious. Go right ahead. This is from <laughs> ah, Gizmodo. <laughs> yeah. Jim Carrey oh, what are you doing? Control. Yeah, Jim Carrey shares concerns about the collective consciousness that led to the sonic <laughs> redesign, but he doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. Uh, what? You know, <laughs> let's talk about collective consciousnesses and uh, Mr. Jim Carrey himself. Uh, now, how dark do we want to go? I like go? to apologize. This is so futile. Good. You will be assimilated. <laughs> Let's talk about collective consciousness just after the LSD discussion. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, but, of course, Jim Carrey is playing uh, the evil Dr. Robotnik uh, in this. And what he's talking about, we all know this, I'm sure, but I'll just uh, recap uh, that uh, when they came out with this art, it actually blew the world away because it was like, this sucks hard. Uh, and then they responded quite well. And they said, you know what? We're going to fix it. And uh, they're working on that. And he's talking about that in this mm-hmm. article, uh, what it means that so many people had that opinion. But <clears throat> the thing with uh, Jim Carrey is he has proven himself to be such an out-of-touch person with reality uh, that I don't know why he should have an opinion at all. Now, I know he's been through a tough time. He's had people die around him. He's had girlfriends die around him. And uh, some people even kind of blamed him for it. Uh, so I get this. Uh, but uh, Jim Carrey is way, way, way deep, dude. This and, is a uh, guy who stands on the top of tables at random restaurants mm-hmm. with an eyedropper full of salt, liquid salt or sugar, and tries to drop a, you know, tries to uh, squeeze a drop of it from the highest point he can hold his hand out to an, an extension into a cup of coffee down on the floor. And he will do it until he actually makes it. Yeah. This is uh, a guy mm-hmm. who was an anti vaxxer. <laughs> He's also the same guy who gets on and does videos saying how much he loves young, young, young actresses and how much he thinks that they would be a perfect couple together. This is Jim. He Perry. also questions the validity of the campaign for Skunk Girl. And I oh. can't imagine that. So basically what we're saying is he's an unreliable narrator for anything. We should move on. Got it. That's right. And Sean Davis might have encapsula- encapsulated this most perfectly by saying Jim Carrey is a crackhead. Rock on. I just want to say real quick, uh, you know, I, I see uh, Pixel put it out there, but I want to say it. Everybody, if you haven't gone, you should go to CoverCrashers.com and check out wow. his Indiegogo. It's Look awesome. At your timing. It is a, a parody of many of the indie comics that are out right now. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. He put a lot of work in it. I'm going to say something. If you are a fan of art, you will love this because what Pixel has actually done is take the style of the artist he was doing and make their card in that style. That's how good he, he's been with this. He's so uh, yeah. good. Yeah, no. Um, and, of course, <clears throat> this is the next thing I was coming to anyway. As you guys see here, this is the IndyCron page, and I'm looking at the cover mm-hmm. crasher. And of course, it's uh, on Indiegogo now, so definitely go check that out. And hopefully uh, uh, one of my moderators is doing their job and putting uh, uh, putting up clips there. Uh, looks like uh, Pixel's taking care of it himself. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this Hooray. is a fun-looking little project. Uh, he's uh, basically kind of taking the piss at uh, the, all the different creators in uh, in the Indie Revival, uh, which is fun. Uh, and uh, some of them even helped him with it, uh, which is even better. Uh, but uh, I love his little meme where <clears throat> he has... Um, uh, he has his cyber log sitting there, and uh, he has a picture of Ethan looking uh, worried and dismayed. And then he has a picture of uh, Lone Star, or whatever the joke he Clone made with Star. that. Clone Star, right, right, Clone Star. And uh, Ethan is so happy. It's a great little meme, dude. I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those memes yeah. that the kids love. It is a meme. meme. It is. Meme. Yeah. Hey, love Teresa's them. in the house. Teresa is our intrepid on site reporter. And she does a lot of uh, indirect interviews. So say hello to Teresa in the chat, guys. Hello, Teresa. And I believe hello. I spoke to her. Hello, Teresa in the chat, guys. I believe I spoke, hello, I spoke to her the here? other day when I did the Nerdarchy uh, uh, interview, didn't I? You did. Um, I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've been. And as, a, as Dr. Wright says, I've been out on 
in the field. I'm just only after now getting back. Oh. What were you picking? It was a lovely day. I, I'm sorry? What? That was a joke. What were you, <laughs> what were you picking? What were you picking? <laughs> like what flowers and anything? I was oh. thinking berries, raspberries, bo uh, boysenberries, huckleberries, blackberries. Those are all good. I like um, Yeah. I'm very partial to blackberries mm -hmm. and, of course, strawberries. Racist. <laughs> Is it racist? Is it racist, Booster? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for joining us. Blackberries oh are racist now. Yeah, of course mm -hmm, they are. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you can't, can since you, you are just fresh from the field, why don't you tell us a little bit about Iconic Comics? Oh, isn't that lovely to put me on the spot now? <laughs> that was a plan. I don't have my notes in front of me. Um, yes, I did get a chance to speak with Mr. Timothy Lim. Uh, uh, he told me all about what they're doing with um, I Iconic Comics. It's mainly a, a way particularly to uh, publish and distribute. I Don't quote me on, on that. I need to check out my notes. I mean, he was telling me about it. It's, it's basically like a friend of his out, I think it was in Houston, but I know it's in Texas, had the storage and capital to be able to create a, uh, a sort of independent label, but he's not going to do it like year round is, is what I got out of it. He's, and it's not, you know, something you can do in a series, but it is something that he would do for, you know, independent, uh, you know, creators that you can come in there. It's sort, it's sort of like a smaller, uh, what is it, Antarctic Press? Yeah, he was. You know, he was talking about small, this the other day, actually, on the, on the show when he did the uh, Walt Disney one. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, so a lot of a uh, kind of semi announcements. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, now let me uh, <clears throat> let me jack back, uh, jump back over and uh, guys, definitely check out uh, Pixels uh, Cover Crashers. It's a fun little thing, uh, and uh, definitely go support that and uh, uh, and check it out. I think it's a lot of fun. Also, uh, just to re reiterate, uh, we do have Insider Magazine here <clears throat> that is launched and it's got about bunch of content already and i know there's a lot of creators who are going to bring more and more to it uh so it's a uh, this is a fun interesting day uh, a lot of cool things going on now uh when uh, with the digital side of it uh, um uh here dr wright uh this is free right you look like you're on the admin page <laughs> Yeah, it's. So, uh, I am on the oh, admin no. page because it's what I have access to. It's my it's my access page. Yeah, the bugbear speaks. Did yeah, you write one, Chester? Everything I is did, free. Yes. Uh, you know, we are going to put up some merchandise and that kind of thing to make a little bit of money. We're going to do some Amazon type things. You know, like so people can go directly from the site. But that's more for like convenience sake than anything else. Mm -hmm. We do. We love our logo. We we work hard on the logo. Like I said. Uh, model is is working on you know an animated logo that I'm sure is going to be fantastic and people are going to you know flip their lid over that. Mm -hmm. uh, Zevius again has created several logos for us. The one on the side is he's working on one that'll because it's with uh, the sort of modular uh, ability of WordPress. It's a little bit difficult to change things exactly how you want it unless you do some custom CSS. So he's working on some custom CSS to make a, a specific photograph for the logo that we had that was in the chat that everybody loved. It's kind of a black background with a wispy blue smoke and a, a animated logo, you know, in the front. It looks gorgeous. If you want to see it, it's on my it's on the actual Insider banner, Insider Mag banner at Twitter. That's mm -hmm. at Insider Mag. And it's also I think it's on my, the Facebook banner as well. So it is fantastic looking. And we're going to have, you know, shirts made of, of the different logos, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cups, mouse pads, all that kind of good stuff. This is a great logo. It's a great company. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna push people far. We're gonna have a lot of people that that are, that come in and love this kind of thing, and they just want to create. You know, like Joe Marone. I've never heard of what he wants to do, but he seems passionate about it. So I'm sure there are other people out there too. Yeah, that, that would want to get into. I agree. That. And uh, to answer my own question, uh, Pixel has said yes. The uh, uh, the uh, digital is free, but of course the print on demand is not. Which, which of course that's true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it is free. Gonna, guys. Yeah, you pay for that, and that's. I mean, the reason why we did it that way is we didn't want to crowdfund. Like everybody crowdfunds everything, you know what I mean? And we kind of felt like a little bit like that was begging and we didn't want to beg. We're going to use it. We want, we're like, no, what we're going to do is we're going to take it on faith and we're going to get the ISBN ourselves within the, or, you know, within us and, and maybe a few other people. And, you know, we're going to buy that so that we don't have to get, because if you don't do that, you give the rights to, to the rights to distribute belong with Amazon. They'll give you one, but then it belongs to them for like a year. And we don't want to do that because if it works well within the first couple, you know, uh, issues, we want to take it back and just do our own thing with it. 
So we're going to, you know, buy the ISBN so that we can have that. And then we don't know what the circulation is going to be. So we wanted to have, we wanted to give, you know, a print on demand option so that we wouldn't be paying a huge price or asking for a lot of money when there wasn't that much of a demand. Yeah, no, we're I gonna think find out. I think it's a smart move, dude, uh, the way you're going about it and having it free for the community get, and uh, for people to be able to get involved. Of course, there's a editorial accepting uh, uh, process, obviously. Uh, but uh, the fact that it's open, free, everyone come get involved. And uh, I think it's awesome, dude. It's the way to go. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you very much for coming on and talking about it today, dude. Uh, I also want to take a couple of moments here and uh, go back over to Todd, if he's still with us. It looks like he decided to not be with us. Uh, so instead, I will be going over to uh, Manny at Good Duck Press. How you doing, dude? Oh, Manny. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm here. My wheel oh, is great. I know. Why don't you tell us oh, a little well. bit about Skunk Girl, dude? Take a few minutes. Well, it's a mm -hmm. story of a, it's a villain story. It is totally out of the ordinary. I mean, you got all these superhero stories. You got this uh, horror stories, fantasy stories. I wanted to go totally different and do a villain. So she's a, she's a fun character. I mean, it's great. I mean, it's 80 pages, full glossy cover i mean i'm going with the, the best that i could get you know mm -hmm. it's going to be a perfect bound book uh nice the first the first story is 62 pages i have a backup story done by shinobi raccoon so he's going to introduce his character uh cherry blossom they're going to have a team up cherry blossom and Funk girl so that will be the first appearance of cherry blossom and i feel so bad for about uh the wolf now that he's been promoting the book all all this episode and uh he wasn't do very well in skunk girl uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's yeah, love, right like i mean that's, i think that's true love that's true yeah love. sorry <laughs> it's like the giving tree you know yeah, oh but it was the giving tree he he, I mean, he just gives and he gives and he gets shot in the face yeah no shot right in the face one dies in comics no no, except no, okay, for okay. no one stays dead in comics. Okay, we'll take that. I don't it's think that's memorable. true either. Yeah, yeah, it's a very memorable death. And the best thing about Skunk Girl, mm -hmm. uh, Booster Boys is now canon. Booster Boys are now canon. The Booster Boys. Okay. So that it. means that I am canon. Well, no. well, no. well. Let's not take it that far. What do you mean, don't take it that far? I am the oily god, <laughs> sir. Throw out the links to uh, like Xevious <laughs> again and Model 316, Teresa, uh -huh. all of our, you know, Ishiro, Kat, all of our hard workers behind the scenes. I know not everybody got on the panel, but I just want to thank them and let them know that I appreciate everybody on the team. Oh, rock on, dude. I thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. So we get the insider. Uh, 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 Todd left, so uh, we don't have more information on the uh, 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 IndyCom uh, TV, although I have seen a lot of it. I'm doing uh, uh, some stuff with them as well. Uh, uh, they're going to do a lot of uploads and uh, a lot of other different kind of content, uh, but uh, I, I will be. It's not 100% yet, uh, but uh, I will be doing a uh, once a week type of uh, live stream, uh, maybe a talk show or, or something a little different than we normally do. Uh, we want it to be different. Uh, you didn't make the cut, Chester. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. I, 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 they all know. They know. They know that they are bad and wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming on, guys. And uh, what I want to do now is just take a moment to have anybody who has anything to extra promote to promote beyond that. Uh, for instance, I know, uh, um, uh, Jay, you're, you're not working on anything right now? Hold on. Sorry about that. I had to turn my mic on. Uh, am I well that actually depends unfortunately as I <laughs> said in the worst possible way I'm, I'm not actually making comics anymore because I, I couldn't secure an artist but I am now doing primarily prose and illustrated novels oh that's kind of cool oh yeah yeah so uh, right now I've got a few stories that I have, short stories that I'm going to be putting onto Kindle soon that uh, in my meager skills, I've been able to do my own cover art. And then I've found somebody who's very good at doing single illustrations but can't do sequentials that I'm very happy with. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the process of doing a, a cyberpunk story, um, which in itself is a very vague descriptor. But uh, it really kind of taps into the uh, older Jack and the Beanstalk myths of re the really where the folktale originated and uh, applies it to a kind of a more modern uh, cyberpunk vibe where well i'll i'll share it when it gets there but did Dude, you just are they going to be climbing you know what I think happened? 
I, I had think about, we need to get a and quartered fan edition with the Shiro's uh, the smallest. Was it was it the smallest minority? Oh well, that was an early draft of the title. It's bombshell. Okay, bombshell. I like that better. Yeah. I, I I'm I'm I think you should do a drawn and quartered fan edition with bombshell, and let's find an artist. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, there's lots serious, of artists over I, here, man. Um, yeah, definitely. Geez, thank you. That's okay, a, sure, absolutely. I mean, if you're uh, not too <laughs> upset about me being a complete asshole a few minutes ago, um, <laughs> no. Well, really. I'm on a little like, time. They keep me around, so. Yes, I'm very just, sorry just, about that, guys. I, no, I mean, the bitterness don't, on that don't is don't pretty deep. Don't you worry about it. Goodness okay, me. Okay. Okay. You, pe um, you people, honestly. Yeah. Although, all right, I, I, all right, although no. you did just kind yeah. of throw a history challenge out to me. Uh, the origin, the original origins are Jack. Uh -oh. Do you really know who oh, he is? Oh. No, no. no, no. Well, probably not. But I've done quite a bit of research, and it's kind of weird uh, the various uh, stories because. The narrative I'm weave weaving with this Jack and the Beanstalk tale um, originated from an anthology I was putting together of having a bunch of writers do uh, post-apocalyptic and uh, cyberpunk retellings of the Grimm's fairy tales because I had felt that fairy tales had become soft and they'd been turned into uh, romances and soap operas. And I really wanted to bring back the fact that these old fairy tales were horror stories for the most part were very, very dark. <laughs> And, for the kids. Yeah, well, it. Jack, what was it? Uh, Hansel and Gretel's about cannibalism and pushing yep. an old lady into an oven. Uh -huh. um, yes, do it. Uh, and do it. famine. But anyway, um, in the process, the story I was writing for that anthology I was collecting uh, just kind of grew out of control, and it was merging the concept of Jack and the Beanstalk with, uh, this will sound insane, but the uh, fall of Lucifer. Um mm. And I've got this narrative where it's kind of a futuristic uh, Bay Area after some sort of horrible cataclysm. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a trade of contraband. And the only way to get contraband out of the city, which is San Francisco, is to run it through this huge thing called the Briar, which is this bio-organic uh, bio factory scape structure that seems to have grown in the Bay all on its own for some reason during the cataclysm. And it's infested with uh, antibodies, which are these machines that will kill anything that enters it. And it's about this boy whose lot in life is running back and forth between uh, the two cities through the briar. And um, he encounters one of the, one of the machines, uh, talks to him, uh, that is just completely you know, the first time one of these things didn't try and kill him. And that sort of just starts... Uh, he gets a, a a bag of seeds, which turns out to unlock memories, and it just goes from there. Interesting. What that the? sounds very interesting. Okay. So was, yeah. So it, it just it? just just so to the give giant you. Lucifer or... Well, no, it's a, it sounds like you've got your own story anyway. But if you're interested, uh, a little bit of roads for you to take down. First of all, uh, Jack shows up in uh, most, if not all, of the Grim fa Fairy Tales, actually, and uh, you also can find him in Aesop's Fables. He's much older than that. I'll give mm -hmm. you two little hints about him. Uh, well, I'll give the you giant one. killer. Uh, no, uh, Adam and Eve. You're shitting me, really? It goes back no, that I'm, far. That's right. Yeah, Jack. It goes back. Uh, the to giant the slayer story. is really, really interesting. How it is the, interwoven the itself story. from ancient, ancient times into modern culture. And the Egyptian horsemen that be eventually became the Israelites or something, right? No, Chester? no, to well, no, something. No. Not even. Uh, let me let me send you my email. I mean, well, the reading <laughs> I. Had, I had did had talked about Jacob's ladder and uh, there'd been a bit about Prometheus and uh, yep. um, Lucifer uh, somehow oddly tied into it all, but I didn't know it went back that far. Yeah, no, it, um, it touches all those things, dude. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. Anyway, I better stop uh, doing that because when anytime I talk about history, I get yelled at. So I well, think it's a great pitch. And I think that some... you, you throw that at a couple of artists and, and one of them doesn't bite on it, they're foolish. Well, it's uh, being put together as, uh, I guess, uh, a light novel is what they'd call it in Japan, where it's uh, there's illustrations every few pages. Sure. And right now, I've I've got an Italian artist named uh, Nico Saba who um, is I, I'm telling if he's undercharging, he's that good. But once we're done with the project, I would be more than willing to pass his name on to any of you. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> he's he's keeping him close to the vest right now. <laughs> well, yeah, well hey, you know what? I, I've got an artist now that. On this project, he's extremely reliable. He's insanely yeah. talented. Let me get the project done, then I'll share. <laughs> I, I got you, man. I got you. Hey, your video for Bombshell, is it still out there? 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the art uh, doesn't do it justice. I mean, the art. Um, yeah, let me grab that. Give me a minute. I'll send. I'll put it in the uh, chat. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, because people should go but, look at that, and you know, get just the idea, the concept, so that you guys the, can uh, order that he can make this comic because it'd be amazing. So you're familiar with it then? Yeah, I remember when it was the smallest minority. I wanted it then. Yeah. And, you know, you you went through the various iterations. We're not going to go through this again, but you went through the various iterations. Some things happened. It fell apart. And in the community, you know, I felt. I mean, I made several. Uh, comments about how I felt the community had failed you in, in a way because we have Thank a you. brilliant writer here guys He can write articles guys. He can write visual narrative. He can write prose poetry Everything I have seen from Ashiro is amazing. I want to see more comics from this man. Jeez. Thank you There you go. No, it's just I got to admit there are still nights where it If any you're all creators here in one way or another and to have a, a year's worth of work just completely get destroyed or thrown aside due to dumb reasons it hurts it's hard it does. It, yeah it, it absolutely does it there's too. also that that like you know like a dopamine dendrite irreceptacle problem which means you haven't completed what you need to complete you know what i yeah. mean you've got to right. finish but to, be, but to be fair ishiro joe was your third artist and he worked up till the day you fired him correct yeah, that, hey, Todd, can we not get into this, this please? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, no, uh, I do have true. to say that I am uh, I am triggered. Uh, P.S. Melter, much love for yeah, everyone here, especially this. Todd and Manny. Not, but not the filthy kiwi. Okay, not the filthy kiwi. What? I get what? it. I get it. One hundred percent. But uh, m uh, Todd and Manny. What about Chester? Damn it! I uh, I, I put the uh, video link. Oh, thank you, dude. In the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bill says, uh, you can read about Jack in College Buddies. <laughs> uh, uh, Joe uh, says, no, Chester, tell me about Jack and uh, Jack and uh, Adam and Eve. Nah, I'm no, sorry, no, dude. Don't do that. I won't do that. I can't do it. They yell There's not me. enough time in the bloody world. Well, maybe we can bring you on when you can uh, come on my show and we can talk about literature. There you go. Yeah, do do that. Happy do that. that. Talk about that stuff on someone else's show. Well, yeah. you, you're not a fan of literature? <laughs> they, dude. No, I'm not a fan of Chester's rambling. We need to create a lattice work. <laughs> There's a lot of YouTubers out there. There's not a need to create more channels. There's a need to connect everybody. I mean, you look at like That's Professor true. Geek, Ashiro, and, and you look at Chester here. The three of you could have a conversation that, that would leave the rest of us in the dust that we wouldn't understand, but we'd still love to listen. To. <laughs> well, you know. <clears throat> I think it's uh, I'm trying to figure this out because I would like to start doing live streams with specifically, uh, you know, doc, uh, Dr. Wright and some of you guys definitely now that I've met you. Oh, yeah. Well, we're here. Indie, indie, there's IndieCom and TV. And then, of course, uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Wright's uh, new one, Insider. Yep. So Insider yeah. Bank with uh, Pixel and uh, all the big crew and, of course, uh, Dr. Wright as well. Um, anyway, guys, uh, we definitely come to the end of our time. Do keep in mind that uh, until September... Oh, uh, we are, uh, you're able to go get Joe King. It's George's Joe King over at, uh, uh Indiegogo. Uh, that's in demand still. Uh, and I, I know that, uh, there's a, uh, Manny still got his skunk girl. So definitely go check that out guys. Uh, and there's a lot of projects coming and things in the works and everyone's doing this or that. Uh, but, uh, we're, uh, really happy to be over here and talking about it and, uh, uh, interacting with all these creators. And, uh, you guys know, we, uh, we love comics and, um, we love talking about them. Uh, so I, mean, uh, I like comics as a friend. I don't know about love. Oh God! <laughs> uh, Did but, you uh, just keep saying hangouts link? No, no, no. He, he gave the uh, video. I, yeah. I clicked the uh, link. Uh, Booster, okay. uh, 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 thank you very hmm? much. But you can shut up now. Uh, Denali. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, Denali. Uh, now, yeah. you, what was yeah. our topic for uh, TFT tomorrow? I think we were going to talk about uh, Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip. Uh, That's right, dude. Ooh. Operation yes. Paperclip. So uh, keep that in mind, guys. If any of you have uh, know about that topic and you want to come in and talk, of course, TFT yeah. is our tinfoil talk, uh, then definitely uh, let me know. Uh, you can either uh, contact me on the Twitter or the Facebook below. Twitter is easier, though, for me. And uh, just let me know. Anybody here on the panel, of course, if you want to be in, let me know. And, of course, in the chat as well. Uh, we are definitely going to be getting deep into Project Paperclip and uh, all the wonderful conspiracy theories that came out of that. Uh, but other than that, Denali, take us out of here, man. All right. Well, I want to thank all of our guests uh, from both Insider and IndieCom TV for joining us and talking about their great project and the involvement in make, becoming the reconstruction of the community and the indie scenes. We're all hip now to it. 
Um, join us tomorrow for TFT, where we're talking Operation Paperclip. Join my newsletter for The Immortal Mask at Denali's comics at gmail.com it's gonna it's working amazing and i'm excited to show stuff when it's ready but as always your perception shapes your reality so always make it a good one namaste, namaste. all right Gunzutek. later guys <laughs> okay. See you later. thanks for having me everybody